to the Glory Road television show. I'm your host, Dr. Candace Smitheman, and I am pumped up and lit because I have Run With Fire Ministries with me today, Roy Fields, and he is a worship leader. Um, he has preaching on the inside of him. He goes all over the world, he transforms nations. He has been to all parts of the world, literally, and had the opportunity to minister through song, through word, to thousands upon thousands of people. The ministry on the inside of this man has changed and transformed people's lives and in the life of his wife Melanie she has ministry on the inside of her and so I am so blessed and excited today to have Roy with me we're just going to talk to you all we're just going to minister to you um, he this man has CD upon CD you can go to his ministry website at runwithfireministries.com he has his own television program on the Christian television network mm -hmm. but you can find out all about Roy and Melanie by going to their website but we're just going to minister to you today. We've already been talking off offline here about so many different things. And so I'm just, he is lit. I'm telling you, he's lit. So I'm just going to let him start talking to you. <laughs> and then we're going to begin to build. God's going to do some amazing things in 2018. And when this program airs right about that time, I just feel prophetically that God is just preparing Roy and he's got a word on the inside of him. And so we're just going to start there. Roy, what is God talking to you about 2018? Well, I, it's, it's pretty large is pretty big um you know i've heard people talk like that sometimes they're like you know i feel like there's a shift and there's a transition and we hear that all the time but you know when you're insecure and you don't know what's going on you're always in transition and you're always in shift but when you're secure in the father mm -hmm. who jesus died and reconciled us back to him mm -hmm. what we don't understand is he brings security to our lives so all of a sudden everything makes sense mm -hmm. It's like he reveals a blueprint to us and no longer are we worried about transition or shifting. So 2018, I feel like something has literally shifted in the heavens. The fathers and the return to the sons, the sons to the fathers. Mm. Malachi chapter four, the end of Malachi, it says, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send the prophet Elijah. And when he comes, he's going to declare of my coming. That's what it says in chapter four. Yes. Well, guess who comes on the scene? It's not Elijah. It's John the Baptist. Mm. And see, I believe we're looking for Elijah right now mm. to come. Mm -hmm. He already came. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, he did. Mm -hmm. His spirit of Elijah came through John the Baptist to declare yeah. he is, he has come. Amen. Do you know what 2018 is going to be? Mm. It's going to be the year of the relationship between the saints and the father. Ooh, that's powerful. That's the powerful. relationship. The Old Testament was transactional. Mm -hmm. The New Testament was relational. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I believe next year, you know, I don't want to date this, but, yeah. you know, we've had Jerusalem that is now by our United States president, President mm -hmm. Trump, has mm -hmm. said that Jerusalem is absolutely eternally the capital of Israel. Yes. So now here's the thing. People get excited, and I'm excited about that, but here's what we should be more excited mm -hmm. about. Jesus already came. He did the work and said, it is finished. And when he left, now think about this. I want you to think about something. The Bible says that a thousand years to us is one day to God. That's right. Mm -hmm. It took six days to create the world and mankind. Mm -hmm. That means it took him six days. On the seventh day for a thousand years, he rested. Mm -hmm. Then he sent down, and then Adam's born and alive. We lost relationship in the garden. Do you know what many people miss is that in Hebrews, I believe it is, it says that Christ was crucified before the foundations of the earth. So you know what that means? He already died before he died. Somebody says, I don't understand how that works. You don't have to. The Old Testament was transactional. The New Testament was relational. When Jesus came and he said, it is finished, if it's true a thousand years is just one day, then Jesus stepped down for 20 minutes and left and went back to eternity. 
See what you're saying? Mm-hmm. That's it was like that. There you go. And now we're here in 2017, and we've gone through so much pain, but look how much the kingdom of God has progressed. Mm -hmm. 300 years ago, you weren't going down an asphalt road. You weren't enjoying drinking water. You were fighting for your life. You ready for this? Racism has come to the place of abolishment. It's not completely gone. It's not completely gone, but it's almost gone. And the other problem is women vote today. 1919, women voted. Well, Jesus was the greatest proponent to being women's rights because he revealed himself to two women when he came out of the tomb. Mm -hmm. Why didn't he re reveal himself to men? The two women were the first to reveal to. Well, in their culture, that's not right. Why are you treating a woman like she's, she's more than property? Why are you treating a woman like... Because Jesus says you're equal. Mm -hmm. he's, the, he's our greatest relationship advocate. So now look at women's voices today. I mean, let's bring it up to current. Yes. Women's voices today. Yeah. All of a Amen. sudden, you can hear the shaking going on. Yeah. Men are becoming fearful of what they do around women. Mm. Mm. Now, is that like, oh, let's go annihilate them? No, the kingdom of God is expanding. Now men are aware of, I better treat that woman light because I'm, my, lest my face be up on the television. Well, that's true. There that's shaking right again. through the thing. Men. So no matter what the guy did, no matter what all these that's terrible true. things did that was done, what matters is the kingdom of God is expanding. Mm -hmm. So people go, oh, the world's getting darker. Really? Are your heads getting lopped off all over the world? Well, they are in the Middle East. Yes, we know, and Christians are being persecuted. Mm -hmm. But it's a very small minority, which doesn't make light of them and who they are. Right. But what matters is the kingdom of God is expanding. Amen. We're looking at it wrong. We're looking at it with fear and death and, 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 oh, well, you're just positive. You're just, you know, you're just a guru. Well, I told you, I don't drink coffee. Right. I've never drank coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker. I don't drink any soda. I drink water only in my body. Mm -hmm. Well, you're just naturally with your personal charisma. No. When you all of a sudden see the kingdom of God for what it really is, and you've been in the presence of the Lord, and you know who your Father in heaven really is, mm -hmm. there is a fire on the inside of you that cannot be quenched. Right. He is a consuming fire, but he's a consuming fire of love. Yes. What happens to somebody that doesn't have the consuming fire of love in them? They are consumed by fire. And that kind of fire, you don't want. Mm. Mm, that's good. You that's want good. the love. He is love. God is love. Love casts out all fear. You know what we're doing wrong? Let me tell you what, what I did wrong. I judged people as a leader in the body of Christ. Mm. I looked at them internally and said, they're out and I'm in. Mm. But what mm. happens if you're out and they're in? Mm. What happens if you get to heaven and exactly what Jesus said, and I want you to hear me, viewers, in Matthew chapter 5, when there's two men standing before Christ, and one guy says, I fed them when they were hungry. I gave water when they were thirsty. I went and visited them in prison. And Jesus says, yes, you did. And because you did it to the least of these, you did it unto me. But actually, it was Jesus that was saying to the guy, I saw you when you did this. And Jesus is the one. The guy's not even remembering him doing it. He just loved. He just loved. He was just love. Yes. He did the right thing because there's two sons born in the world. There's sons of the devil and there's sons of God. He's the father. What happens is, who's the other guy? Now watch this. This is going to rock a lot of people watching right now. I hope it rocks all of us because it rocked me. Candace, in the last two years, as a minister and as a leader in the body of Christ, I've gone through an absolute metamorphosis, butterfly change in my life. Oh, amen. Tell us about it. I've been saved since I was eight years old. I thought I knew Jesus. I thought I knew God. I've been to every revival. I've been touched by revival. I was in revival and used in revival. Mm -hmm. I thought I knew God, and I got burned really bad. I didn't get mm -hmm. burned by a person. Mm -hmm. I got burned by my own motives, mm -hmm. thinking that I was great in my own heart, mm -hmm. walking down the road, not acting like I was all great, thinking I was great. And the Lord says, I can't have that in my presence. Mm -hmm. You're out. Mm -hmm. So I had an out experience as a minister. What did that look like? What does an out experience look like? Um, do you really want me to go there? Yes, because you know what? People that are watching right now, and you are admitting to where you are in the of body I of Christ. Am. I know where I'm at in the body of Christ. So tell them what it's like to be where you're at and you have an out experience. I was in hell burning. Mm. Did you For three months, I was literally physically mm. on the floor burning in hell. Mm. You saw it, you felt it, you experienced it. Uh, Jesus said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Wow. You prophesied, you cast out demons in my name, and you did all these great signs and wonders, but you have iniquity in you, and you are a practicer of lawlessness. Mm. 
You ready for this? The Jews in the Old Testament, this is what the Father in heaven was trying to say. It wasn't about, why do we look at the Father like he's an evil Zeus up in a stinking throne with lightning bolts in his hand mm -hmm. trying to kill people because they're not lining up with everything. Mm -hmm. So here's what happened. He goes to the Jews and he says, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. What part of this don't you understand? I love you. I love you. I love you. Yes. You chose to go out. You've always been in. Mm. Why are you going out? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, wow. so hang on. I'm gonna. I, I know you got a break. So, yeah. so, so, they're out, right? Or no, they're they're in. And he says, "I just want you to love me." Mm. I mean, Malachi. The whole thing of Malachi is saying, from from Genesis to Malachi, he's saying, "All I wanted was a family, and everything you've given me is everything but a family." Mm. Now I'm gonna shut my mouth and not speak for 490 mm. years. Mm. Let me tell you what 490 means. I'll tell you the next break. <laughs> there you go. Well, don't go away. We'll be right back. I would like to invite you to partake of the transformation of your soul. My husband, Dr. Adam Smithman, and myself coach train you right in this book, six chapters of walking you through the processes of soul transformation. Are you ready to come to that place of really making some changes in your soul? Do you have obstacles that are surrounding you that you can't get over? This will teach you what motivates you to do what you do in your life and how to get over all of those blockades that are stopping and preventing you from reaching your purpose and destiny. Go today to CandiceSmithman.com and order yours. You can go to Amazon.com. There's also digital e-copies online at Amazon.com, but we need to get this in your hands because you need this coaching straight from Dr. Adam Smithman and myself to change and transform who you are. I'd like to talk with you today about covenant partnership with Candace Smithman Ministries. It's wonderful to have the opportunity to come every week and bring you the Word of God and amazing guests who have been transformed by the glory of God, amazing teachers and leaders who are here to just impart to you and encourage you. And with your covenant partnership with us, we come together to be able to bring you the best Word and the best guests so that you're able to grow in the Holy Spirit and be all that God has created you to be. I sit in this seat today because I made a choice to partner with many television ministries all throughout the world. And as I did that for years and years and years, over time, God began to bless me personally and bless my ministry in such a way that he's positioned me even today to have my own television show. I know you're birthing dreams on the inside of you, and I want to connect with you to make those dreams come to pass. And so I'm offering partnership for any amount. No amount is too small just to partner with us at Dream Enters and Candace Smith and Ministries. We want to help make your dreams come alive. And the way to do that is to come together in partnership. The synergy that we create, agreeing with one another, transforms the world, transforms nations. And so I want to be a part with you in doing that. So if you have an interest, please call the number on the screen and decide to partner with partner with us for any amount. No amount is too small. And I want to bless you with some anointing oil, the same anointing oil that we use here at Freedom Destiny Church. It's an amazing blend that we pray over. And I'm going to pray over this anointing oil and we're going to send it to you in a very small little package as a thank you for any amount, any love offering that you want to give on a monthly basis to help keep this program on the air. It is my dream and desire to see your life change. And the only way I can make that happen is to stay on the air. And so we need your partnership to do that. So I want to thank you so much for joining me every week. Tell all your friends about the Glory Road television show. We want to make dreams happen. Remember, there's a Glory Road and you're on it all the way to his throne. Hey, Steve Schultz here with Elijah List Ministries uh, and Elijah Streams television program. Listen, I wanted to quickly invite you all to come out in January. We have our annual conference, prophetic conference. This has got to be the best one ever. I, we are expecting a packed crowd. Kat Kerr is joining us this year along with Robert Henderson. Robert teaches on the courts of heaven. I cannot wait to ex expose more of you to that teaching. It's amazing. Dutch Sheets is coming back. And, it's, and James Gall. Those are the four... This, the conference is called What is Heaven Planning for 2018? You're going to love it. It's going to be great. Go to ElijahList.com to see the ad where you can sign it. Elijah, E-L-I-J-A-H, List.com. 
there will be an ad right at the top or at the right of the page. Click in there and be sure and join us at the conference and be sure and come on and introduce yourself to me. All right, we'll see you there. Bye-bye. Okay, we're back with Roy Fields, <laughs> Run With Fire Ministries. This man is running, he's running. Look at him, he's on the edge of his seat. He's got more stuff he wants to tell you, so I'm just gonna turn it over to him. We are in Malachi chapter four. Go for it. Well, if you remember from Genesis to, to, to Malachi, God is saying to all of the people, he says, you know, even, even in the middle of Malachi, he says, you know, if I am a father, mm -hmm. where is the honor? Oh. Where oh. is the respect yes, yes. that you give to each other? Yes. Where's my respect? Yes. So God basically divorces. No, he doesn't basically. He actually divorces the Jews in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Now, only a corrupted mind would listen to what I just said and said, that's not right. Well, you're missing the point because if you have a father who loves you, divorce is not a problem. Mm -hmm. Here's why. Mm -hmm. He's provoking you. To draw you back in. Yes. Yes. But now, now I'm going to drop good. a bomb on you, okay? okay? Okay. The Gentiles, he says in Malachi, I will now go to the Gentiles and be their king. Mm. Mm. Now, we are the Gentiles. We've been grafted mm -hmm. in. Jesus comes. Yes. He dies on the cross. While we're dead on the cross, or while, before he dies on the cross, excuse me, while he, before he dies on the cross, Peter, he has an old Hebrew mindset. Remember something, that these guys were unqualified, by the way, which mm -hmm. means they would have went through learning, learning the Torah by age 12, and they would have been able to quote anything to you if they had one line of verse that you quoted. They could mm -hmm. tell you the whole chapter. Yes. By heart, by yes. memory. They learned the Pentateuch, the Torah. Right. That's, That's their right. tradition. So Peter in his head says this. So Jesus, now that you're here and you're doing all this forgiving, um, how many times should we forgive? Seven times? Well, in the tradition of Jewish tradition, it's seven times a day that you forgive somebody, mm -hmm. but there has to be goats, spilled blood, and all this kind of stuff. Read Hebrews. It says there's not enough blood and goats to ever cover your That's sin. That's right. There isn't. So he's meeting, here's the deal, he's meeting man where they're at. People mm -hmm. are making these laws. They're killing themselves and doing this. Mm -hmm. He's meeting man where they're at. Mm -hmm. So people think God brought the law, like Charlton Heston. Right. Terrible representation of yeah. our father. <laughs> That's Zeus. Yes. Our Father, if we are sons, we were already in. Amen. The Jews too. Yes. So now here's the problem. Jesus has to deal with not only the Jews, but now he has to deal with the Gentiles. Even though the Gentiles are quicker to come into the kingdom, which he says, what does he say? He says, why are the sons of light not wiser than the sons of the world? Yes. Because they will quickly, by faith, hear that they're forgiven and they're in, and they'll just accept it, yes. and they'll change their behavior. Right. Because they realize you're real and that you're loved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, now watch this. So Peter okay. says, how many times should we forgive? Seven times, Lord? Now watch this. For 490 years between Malachi and Matthew, there is not one sound from heaven. God doesn't speak a word. Nobody's inspired to sing. Nobody's inspired mm -hmm. to preach. No prophet shows up and says, thus saith the Lord. What happens to Israel in that condition? They go astray. Mm -hmm. They go, they don't have a God to serve anymore. They're just, he's left him. He's divorced him through the prophet Malachi. Right. So what happens is they get crazy. They start bringing in trinkets and stuff and start lifting up other gods and mm -hmm. doing stuff differently. They start becoming governmentally involved with um, political decisions. Mm -hmm. And it's like a political spirit is born. And mm -hmm. so Jesus comes right then, which is only half a day in the time clock of God. Mm -hmm. Peter says, should we, should we, uh, shouldn't, we forgive seven times, right? That's yeah. our tradition. Right. And Jesus says, no, Peter, seven times 70. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not a mathematician, but seven times seven is 49. Add a zero, it's 490 90. years. Yeah. What God is saying is, I forgave you for 490 years. Mm. You better forgive everybody that's in your sight. Mm. 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 Wow. So we need to understand how we died with Christ, were buried with Him, have been resurrected in Him, how we are to walk in forgiveness all the time. All the time. And now here, yeah. here's the warning. This is the bomb. Mm -hmm. And this is for you and me. Okay. This is very serious, actually. Away from the camera for a moment, even though you're watching this. Yep. I'm going to say this to you, to you, to you, and the camera people, and everybody listening. Listen very clearly, because you're the first show that's ever airing something that I'm saying right now. This is so fresh from heaven. This is so fresh in my own life. Mm. You're the first to get it, okay? Amen. Christians need to beware. 
especially revival Christians and especially Pentecostal charismatic people. Mm. Baptists and everybody, yes, but I'm speaking from my experience. And you don't go by just my experience. This is my story, so you can't judge my story. Mm -hmm. I can't judge your story. Mm -hmm. Everybody's a different place, but the end result is to get back to the place we started. Right. Mm -hmm. We were all together in the Lord before we even came to this earth. Yes. We were already in Him. People forget that. Mm -hmm. Okay. The warning is, I reached the pinnacle of ministry, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Do you realize I've had every... You don't realize this because you don't know me that well. Every prophecy that was ever spoken to me has all come to pass. Mm. Not one has been left out. I've had every prophecy come to pass mm. in my life. Wow. I had every dream I ever dreamt came to pass in my life. I'm 41 now. Mm. By age 31, I was in Lakeland. I was in the presence of God. Somebody says, what was Lakeland like for you? I'll tell you what Lakeland was like for me. Lakeland was like people showing up with cameras and invading my private space with God. Mm -hmm. mm. That's what Lakeland was like. Mm. But then after that, and I've been through revival, as I begin to walk and continue to walk and just go all over the world, 32 countries and three and a half million dollars came in that we put into the ministry and funded everything, didn't charge a church one dime. Mm. Wow. And that sounds great. Wow, you must be a man of God. And yet I came to the end of that and I said, Lord, humble me. Mm. He says, you know what you're praying? You sure you really want to see who you think you are? Mm. You're an avatar of your own mind. Wow. You're an avatar of your own mind. Mm -hmm. You don't know me. Mm. Whew. What a powerful I said, dear God, what do you mean I don't mm. know you? I've given my life. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. This is a warning. This is not to fear. This is not to bring fear. But if it shoe fits, let it fit. Because in James it says, on some use fear and on some use compassion. Either way, hopefully they get saved. And Christians who have been practicing Christianity need to get saved. They don't know God. It's not a fearful thing to bring fear, but if it brings fear, it's actually the mercy of God if you feel the fear of God because Solomon said the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. You don't fear him like a father. Sorry, you don't fear him like a God who's Zeus and going to kill you and pour out wrath like we keep on reading, like even the way it came through that was interpreted to us all our lives growing up. Mm -hmm. You read as a father returns home. If you were a child and you misbehaved in front of your mother, your mother would deal with you, but then she would say what? Wait till your father comes home because when he comes home, he's going to deal with you. And how would that kid respond? How did you respond? You were nervous. You were like, I got to face this. That was me. I had to face my internal life. Roy, are you being cryptic? Are you saying that something else happened? No. My own motives and who I thought I was inside was very arrogant and prideful. Mm -hmm. And the majority, I know this, the majority of Christians are very, very judgmental. Mm -hmm. Even revival people that look at people and judge them every day. Mm -hmm. No wonder the world doesn't want to come and join the church. Mm -hmm. You tell a prostitute she's going to hell, she already knows she's going to hell. Yes. Do you love me? Yes. That's it. Don't, don't push Jesus down her throat. Jesus didn't push it down her throat. Mm -hmm. Jesus went up to the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. And he says, are you okay? Mm -hmm. I'm paraphrasing. Yes. Are you okay, daughter. sweetheart? Yes. Where are your accusers? And he's so smart. He used the law. See, the law, you had to have accusers. And you had to have judgment and two or three witnesses. But Jesus did something awesome because Jesus had a brand new thing called Samika, which is a rabbi. By the way, Jesus was a rabbi. Mm -hmm. You know why I know that? Because they called him rabbi. Yes. <laughs> it's written. <laughs> Not only that, he spoke in the synagogues. He mm -hmm. spoke in there. Yeah. We didn't even get to my song in the presence of angels. You have to hold off on that. <laughs> I want to do another interview. I, I got to finish this. You yes. got to hear this. Yes, please. This finish. is life to your bones. This okay. is life to every single person listening. Amen. This is not some kid who's hyped up and he just loves ministry and all this. I loved ministry since I was eight, but I have woken up. I all of a sudden understood I'm awakened. That's another thing that's going to happen mm. in 2018. Amen. There's an awakening going on. Mm. That's why all across yes. the news, everybody's hearing about fake news. All of a sudden yes. you're seeing, it's not about Democrat and Republican, folks. It's mm. never been about Republican and Democrat. The law of three if you only have two people, they're always going to argue for all eternity. But you bring somebody in the middle and it becomes balanced. Mm -hmm. There's no more strife. I prefer you above myself. It's not about my interview. It's not about you. It's about us and it's about him. And it's about expanding the kingdom. Amen. 
It's not in materialistic things. It's not in gold and silver. Those things happen. But even Paul told Timothy, don't seek to be rich because you'll run yourself through with many sorrows. Yes, yes. We are avatars of what we want to be. Mm. We should be those who he called us to be. Mm. So, since I know we're coming to an end. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we weren't. And we'll have to continue. It's like a river that just I flows see. up from my belly and comes out. It's beautiful. Out. It's beautiful. But I want to leave them. You, we've given them so much. Sure. Let's leave them with something that they can say, okay. So I've received so much of what Roy has said. And I feel condemned. I feel guilty. I feel, I don't feel the love of God. Um, or I, I, I don't really know who I am. Mm -hmm. um, or I sense that I have pride. Mm -hmm. um, I sense that I have an arrogance about myself. Yes. You fall in any of those categories and some. All you got to do is confess it to the Lord. That's it. Just be authentic. Just be authentic. That's it can it. be the most insignificant prayer that you can think of, but just say enough of authentically, and he will grab a hold of that, and he'll help take you to the place of receiving his love and seeing so him so for good. who he is. That's it. And then once you tap into that place, you'll be flooded with his love. You'll have the forgiveness that you need and you'll be able to get up and go for what God has called you to do and be. All you have to do is come to that place of submission. And hopefully this entire conversation has brought you to that place. Roy is here today with us because he's part of the Destiny Encounter Conference with Georgian and Winnie Banoff right here in Jacksonville at Grace Avondale Church. And he's ministering tomorrow, tomorrow night. He's going to be singing. He's got beautiful songs that you can go and find on Run With Fire Ministries. Amazing things that's happened. Amazing prophecies have been over his life, as he said. But the fact that on this program you confessed. Mm -hmm to the world, mm -hmm. that at, no matter the seat that you sit in, the platforms that you have occupied throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And I've been with most every single leader you've ever known. That God still said, Roy, you don't know me. You don't know me, and you got to look in the mirror. I want to show you me a little bit more. Exactly. And that is extremely humbling. And so if God would say that to Roy, he could say that to any of us. And, you know, God has spoken those things to me. Everybody that comes to that place of authentically being in relationship with God has had him say, wake up, you don't really know who you are. And when we come to that place in him and with him and he showers us, we find out who we are. We find out we're loved. We, found, we find out we are oh, in it's him. So, it's, 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 it's even better than what you're saying. It's better than what I'm saying. We do not know how much he loves us. It says that the things that God has planned for us has never even yet entered into the minds and the hearts of any man yet. Mm. So it's an open door. Come it's on. an open window. It's awesome. So listen, you want more information about knowing Jesus, go to CandaceSmithman.com. Go to Run With Fire Ministries. We'll have Roy on again with all of his fire to talk to us <laughs> at another time. But we thank you for joining us today. And remember, we're all on the glory road straight to his throne. And I want to take the glory road That will lead me to your throne